Praise God. Praise God, viewers. I welcome you uh, to this uh, uh, message which I want to give you. But before I give you, let us bow down our heads and have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you with thanksgiving in my heart for the life you have given me, even for this opportunity to come and minister to your people. I'm just a simple vessel, but you have the message. As I decrease, I ask the Holy Spirit to increase in me, to give me clarity, revelation, as I speak to your people, wherever they, uh, they are, in their homes, in their place of work, that this word will have an effect, positive effect in their lives, in their families, even upon the church and the nation and the, the entire continent. We thank you, Lord. I bless you. I give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So I welcome you to uh, this uh, service, viewer. I know you are at home. I know you are at a place of work. I know you are in your business. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want just to, to take this time to share a word that God has given me this time. And the word will be, uh, or my topic will be returning to the Lord. Uh, uh, returning to the Lord, which uh, in my introduction, I will just uh, try to explain the meaning of the word return or returning to the Lord. Uh, we see uh, in the worldly dictionary that the word to return means to put back as to a former condition or a place. Uh, to, to revert to the former owner or the former state. You find in uh, many dictionaries, Webster, Oxford, if you go to those dictionaries, you find they are explaining the word to return. But uh, according to the Bible dictionary and the concordance, we shall see that it, it means uh, uh, almost the same, but in a biblical sense, it will be meaning, it means to return back to the Lord or to return to the former state that God desired us to be. So, there are many meanings according to the concordance or the Bible dictionary of which are descriptive of the word return, of which we shall be seeing uh, the types of return that are mentioned in the Bible and practically how we can apply in our lives in this dispensation we are living in so that we can get the full benefit because when God gives a word through the Bible it's a word that is living, that is sharp, active and is able to help us to conform to the will of God. And that's why we need to uh, believe this word. So, the first description I shall give is uh, concerning the word return is going back home. We want to see in Genesis chapter 31 verse 3. Genesis, you open your Bible with me. Genesis chapter 31 verse 3. It reads, Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your family, and I will be with you. Also again, verse 13. I am the Lord 
I am the God of Babel, where you anointed the pillar, and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land, and return to the land of your family. So, this is the account of Jacob. We know Jacob was the son of Isaac. And Isaac had two sons, the other one was Esau. So, God is telling uh, Jacob to return back. This was an incident whereby Jacob had left his original home. You know what happened. And when he was coming out, something happened. He went to uh, to sleep to a, uh, in a place and saw in a dream a ladder and God ministered to him and visited him and told him that he will bless him and also he vowed that he will bless God in everything that God is going to bless him. But we see in this incident of uh, uh, Genesis chapter 31, Jacob, when he was fleeing, you remember the story, how he colluded with his mother and stole the blessings of Esau. And Esau was very mad about him and wanted to kill him. So he, uh, he, he, he ran away and went to his uncle Laban. And there he stayed. You know the story. It is a long story. I don't want to go in details. And worked for Laban. And finally uh, he got two wives. But when Laban realized that he has uh, taken all his riches. God spoke to him in a dream. Return. Arise and return to your home. And that's why I'm using this word. Uh, return. To mean to go back to your original place. You see, like naturally, we have people who have come into the cities, into the towns, and these people, they have their original home. Sometimes when they, uh, they complete their contract or their work or their employment, they have reached uh, old age, they retire and go back to their original home up country. So we see, um, God was telling Jacob to arise and go to his former uh, uh, place which God spoke to him. And that one we can see in Genesis chapter 28. When God spoke to you, uh, Jacob, Genesis chapter 28 verse 10. Now Jacob went out from Beth Seba and went towards Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at the head. And he lay down in that place to sleep. Verse 12. Then he dreamed. And behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Verse 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and uh, the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie I will give to you, and your descendants. 14. As also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth, you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north 
and to the south, and in you, and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. 15. Behold, I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Verse 16. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Verse 17. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. 18. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. Verse 19. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city had been loose previously. 20. Then Jacob made a vow, a vow, saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going, and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on, verse 21, so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this is the stone which I have set as a pillar, shall be God's house, and of that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. So we find Jacob, when he was running, fleeing, escaping from the wickedness, the anger of Esau, he had to reach this place and God had to minister to him that he will give the land because uh, the grandfather, Abraham, had built the altars. And it is very important to have ancestors who build the godly altars because God will help us uh, to be guided by the presence of God through those altars. So, I believe it was the guidance of the Holy Spirit which led Jacob to go and sleep at this place, to meet God, the God of Abraham, his grandfather, so that he can get direction. And that's why the issue of altars is very important. And I thank God for my uh, senior pastor, Papa Tikanyakina. He has uh, dealt uh, uh, in detail about the altars. So, he received the direction. And when he went, he was blessed. Eh? He was uh, in the house of Laban. And Laban became envious. So, God also spoke to him to return to his former place and to fulfill the vow. But you see what Jacob did as we read in Genesis thirty four. And this uh, is uh, uh, the chapter whereby a sad incident happened. 34 verse 1, we read, Now Dina, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born, to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. Verse 2, And when Shechem, the son of Hama, the wife, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and violated her. Verse 3, his soul was strongly attracted to Dina, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the young woman and spoke kindly to the young woman. Verse 4, so Sechem spoke to his father, Hamas, saying, Give me this young woman as a wife. So as you continue, you find in this chapter, uh, when Jacob had finally fled, from his uncle Laban, instead of going back to the place where God spoke to him, and he vowed to go to give a, a tenth of all the blessings that God will be blessing him. He went to Sechem, and God is speaking to us. We may be suffering 
because uh, of being in a wrong place whereby God did not instruct you, God did not speak to you, God did not minister to you. And you see, God is a God of order, uh, brother, sister. Eh? You can be praying, you can be crying to the Lord, I want to be healed, I want to be blessed. But the position you are in is a wrong position. The place where God told you to stay, the place where God told you to do business, is not a right place. And God cannot bless us. God cannot release a blessing if we are in a wrong place. We have to ask him to be in a right place. So, as long as he went to search him, and you find, if you read the whole story, he built even an altar there, but it was not the place where God spoke. It was not the will of God. That's why, even if we build altars dedicated to God, but in a wrong place, their effect is null and void. They cannot bring the presence of God. They cannot bring the power of God. They cannot bring the revelation of God. That's why we need to seek the Lord this time. If we are in a wrong place and we have to cry to the Lord to help us by His Spirit to return to Him. And that's why I'm using this instance as a form of returning, a form of going back to your original place where God intended to you. Because you cannot return when you did not come out. Jacob had to come out of the original place to go to a place and he, he went to do work, but he was told to go, uh, by God to return to his original place. Because there is the place where God spoke clearly about the blessings, about the covenant he had with his grandfather Abraham. Sister, brother, this message is for you. You may be doing many things. You may be working so hard. You may have, have done the things God has instructed you, but the things you are doing, you are in a wrong place. You are misplaced. You are not in the order of God. This is the word for you. God wants you to return to the original place. He spoke to you. You see, as long as you are in a wrong place, as much as you pray, as much as you do much for the Lord, the blessings cannot come. Because we see in this um, incident as an example to teach us, to help us. When Jacob was in Seychem, he built an altar. I believe he was praying. He had a devotion. But this sad instance her only, his only daughter was raped and his children ganged up to kill the Sechemites. You know the story. And it was very bad instant until he cried to God because when he was being told by God, come out from your uncle's place. Your uncle eh, the, well, is envious. And he heard the voice. And finally they made a peace agreement with his uncle Laban. But he went in a, a different direction. And that's, that's why misfortune, calamity, all types of wickedness fell upon his life. This is a message for, for me and you. At uh, this time, maybe you are facing challenges. You are facing calamities. You are facing sicknesses and failures. Your business, you are trying many things in your business, but it's not working. But maybe... The location, the place where God spoke to you, dear sister, dear brother, is not the right place. But this time, by the inspiration of the Spirit of God, God can speak to you to return to the original place He spoke to you, where you must place your business. God is telling you to return to what He spoke to you to do. Maybe you are a student. 
you, are, you have done many programs, but you are not prevailing. You cannot graduate or you don't have any interest because they were programs that were not ordained by God. But God is telling you to seek him afresh, to return to what he spoke to you. And when you do that, things will work. Things will start to work. You see, we are in a time whereby there is a lot of crisis, even this season. We need to reflect on our lives as much as we pray God to come to defend us, God to come to fight for us. We need also to do a personal, a personal review of our lives to ask the God to search our lives, where we have missed his visitation, where we have missed his way, where we have missed his presence. Because the God I know is a God of order, is a God of instruction. And as we obey his instructions, as we follow his instructions, we find God is able to bless us. We want to reflect to, uh, into our lives as individual, as family. Maybe you are a um, husband, you are a wife, you have left your family, your home, and you have gone somewhere, you are doing many things. God desires you to return to your home, to return and fulfill the duties of a wife, the duties of a husband. And I thank God in this season whereby there is a, a, the so-called lockdown. God wants the family to, re, to be a, a reconciled, the husband to the wife, the wife to the husband, the children to the parents, so that he can release blessings. Maybe your ministry as a church or as a minister of the gospel. You see, sometimes we have left the calling of God and it is very dangerous to leave the calling or to um, uh, stretch beyond the limits of your calling. We have to reflect. We have to ask God to help us because God can only bless you, dear sister, dear brother, dear uh, servant of God, as long as you work in the confines of your ministry of which God spoke to you, of which God revealed it to you. And when you go beyond, you find there are attacks. There are powers that know, the powers, uh, the, 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 the demonic powers, they know you are the limits God has called us. So they can attack us. And that's why we need to pray to God in this season where we have missed the mark. Where we have gone to other ministries that we have not been called. And because of that, God is grieved and we are the target of the devil. We need to reflect and ask the Spirit of God to help us to return to the Lord. And maybe God also is speaking to you. Through this word, he told you to go to a place, but you went in a wrong place. He told you to leave a certain place, and you did not leave. And as a result, you are suffering. I remember one time, God was telling me to do something, or to go to a place, but I did not go. So, the place I went, because I was uh, trying to seek for money to do something so that I can get money. But I was running away from the work of God. But when I went there, although I was promised that I will do this job and get the, uh, the money so that I can use for my needs, I went there and found the contract has been cancelled. Only God to tell me, I wanted you to do my work, but you went to a wrong place. So you can be in a such a situation. God may be calling you to do his work, but you are 
resisting. And because you, you have resisted, you have rebelled, you are doing a lot of uh, uh, hard work, a lot of work, but nothing is coming out because God did not want you to do the, the, that work. But when you return to the original work, to the work he spoke to you, you shall find things are going on smoothly. God is ministering to you. God is blessing you. There is no struggle. There is no opposition because you are in the will of the Lord. The will of the Lord is the best. When we come out of the will of the Lord, we find God cannot be with us. And that's why Jesus was saying, let your will be done. Although the will of God can be uh, sometimes uh, you may, uh, with the consequences, with hardships, because the devil does not want us to accomplish the will of God. Sometimes we can be suffering because of accomplishing the will of God. But it's better to suffer because of the will of God. Jesus suffered. He prayed even three times, Father, if it is nah, not your will, let this cup bypass me. But it was the will of God, the Father, for Jesus to pass through that cup. And when he passed, he gained victory. Sometimes, as we yield to the will of God, life or things cannot be easy. But God's grace will be enough. God's uh, strength will be enough. So, we better yield to the will of God. Let us focus on our lives. This time that God has given us time to pray as families, time to pray as church, as a, a, a body of Christ, where we have left the mark as a ministry. Because each church, each, church, each ministry, be it a church, be it an organization, a Christian organization, has its calling. And when we do that calling, we are blessed. But when we miss the mark, we find God is not with us. The presence of God is not with us. The power of God is not with us. The anointing of God is not with us. And we find we are working so hard, but because we have placed our own programs, we have placed our own direction, we are in a wrong place, we find we are not moving. But this is the word that God is telling, telling us as we return back to the original place. As we return back to uh, what the voice of God uh, told us, as you, we yield, be it as a family, be it as an individual, be it as a student, be it a, a, a mother or a father, be it in your business, God is going to bless you. God is going to touch you. God is going to revive you. Whatever was not working, it will work. And that's why in my introduction, I am dwelling on the word return as a form of going back to the original place. And I'm using this word of God to help us, you and me, to correct our lives and to go back to the original place. Because as much as we do that, God has assured us that he bless us spiritually, materially, financially, professionally, as a ministry, even as a, as a nation. Each nation has its calling, its, its calling. And when the nation misses its calling, when it does not fulfill its redemptive calling from God, it has gone aside. It has strayed from the will of God. And that's why you find the nation is under attack, is under a sort of judgment because it went out of its redemptive core, its original place, although it is still a nation in that place, but it has missed the mark, it has missed the calling of God, it has missed the vision of God, it has missed the destiny of God, and therefore God is not with that nation. God cannot bless that nation. As it is true for a nation, it is true for an individual, it is true for a church, it is true for our family, it is true for our tribe, it is true for the nation, for the continent of the entire uh, um, uh, Africa. And that's why we want to reflect on this word 
I shall be continuing, uh, continuing in other messages about my, more about returning to the Lord. We have seen this form, as I repeat again, returning as a way of going back home. The place, the original place, God designed for you. The original work, the original profession. As we do that, God is not a man to lie. As he has promised, he will do it. And that's why, because it is an introduction message, I'll continue in other messages. I want to lead you in a prayer of returning back to the original place where God spoke to you to be, to the original work where God spoke to you to be, to the original profession, to the original business, to the original ministry as a church, the calling that God called you as a church, as a ministry. God wants you to return to do that work, not to do that yet as a nation and as an entire continent. As we do, and as we do that, God will start ministering to us. God will start um, blessing us. Also, uh, the, this time we need also to reflect of what we promised to God, because God, whatever we tell him on an altar, he regards, because the altar registers all our declarations. Whatever vows we told God, we vowed, we shall be doing, whatever pledges, whatever sacrifices. You see, sometimes when we are blessed, we cannot fulfill the vows. Sometimes we tell God, I'm vowing. When you bless me with a job, when you bless me with a, a, a nice business contract, I shall give you a part to honor you, to give you thanks. But when we have gotten or received those blessings, we forget God. There was a servant of God who was telling me, in a, 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 a certain ministry, there was a, this woman who was crying to get a child. She was barren, and the servant of God was crying to God, give me a child. And finally, God was faithful to grant a, a child to that my, my mother. But finally, after she God, the child, she started giving excuse. I cannot come to church many times. I am at home staying with the child. Many months elapsed. And God was telling the servant of God, because she has gotten a child, now she can't come to the child. Now, because I do not want to lose her, let me take the child, because the child is blocking her not to come to worship me. And you know what happened? The child just passed on mysteriously. And when they, they were praying, God told me, I want my daughter to worship me, because this is a, it is a form of hindrance. So you see, this is very dangerous. We may be uh, passing through hardships because of the vows we made, because of the pledges, because of the promises we made to God. We told God, when you bless me with a job, when you bless me with a good family, I shall be serving you wholeheartedly. But we have forsaken the work of the Lord. We have forsaken the altar of God. We have forsaken hmm, the burden of the Lord. And God is grieved. That's why he's punishing us. He's punishing you. Eh? Maybe your, your, your business eh, has died. It is not working. You are struggling. You have a lot of debts because of the pledges you did not fulfill. Because as we see in this word of God that is helping us this time, speaking to you and me, dear brother, dear sister, dear viewer, Jacob, vow to the Lord all the blessings that God is going to bless him. 
he will give a tenth part of the, the blessings. But he ran away. He went to Shechem. He forgot the vow. vow. He forgot the pledge. He forgot the covenant that was made hmm? between him and God and also between God and his grandfather. Whatever we have done, whatever co uh, covenant we have broken between us and go uh, God through the precious blood of Jesus, we want God to have mercy this evening. We want to return to the Lord. We want to return to the former state. I don't want you to be victim of judgment in this dispensation. God wants to take us out of any trouble. God wants to deliver us. God wants to heal us. God wants to restore us. God wants to revive us. Be it as a family, be it as a church, be it as a nation, be it as a continent, as long as we return to him. And that's why I want to pray with you this time. I know God will touch you as you make a step to return. And return means also repentance, of which we shall be seeing in other teachings, much about repentance. It, goes to, it deals with it about turn. I was going in a certain direction, but now I've changed about turn. I'm going to this direction. I was going to the direction which is ungodly, but I make a bow turn to go to the right direction of God, to go to the place where God promised me, to go to the right place, my original place. And when we do that, this time, I assure you, dear sister, dear brother, God is going to bless you. I want to pray with you. I want to agree with God. We want to agree that the word of God is true. We are the ones who are wrong. God cannot be blamed. Many times people complain God is bad. God is not hearing my prayers. God is or has forsaken me. God cannot forsake anyone. It is not his will. It is not his wish. It is not in his character. He so loved the world that he has brought his only begotten son to die for our sins. So he cannot forsake anybody. He wants just us to return to him. Can we take time? Just reflect on your life. In this crisis that we are in, coronavirus, as much as we, we may be fearful, we may be terrified, but one step that we can do and go to deliver us miraculously is just to return to the Lord. We leave the issue to the Lord. I want you to repeat after me this prayer. Can you say, Father, in the name of Jesus? Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For this word for this word that you have given me that you have given me this time this time you want me you want me to return back to you to return back to you to the original place to the original place you spoke to me you spoke to me to the original business to the original business you told me you told me to the original work to the original work you spoke to me you spoke to me I am returning. I am returning to you. To you. And I know. And I know. As I make a step of returning <clears throat> to you. As I make a step of returning to you. In form of repentance. In form of repentance. You shall bless me. You shall bless me. I know. I know. You have spoken to me. You have spoken to me. In many ways. In many ways. As you spoke to Jacob. As you spoke to Jacob. On that altar, on that altar, where his grandfather Abraham, where his grandfather Abraham had built, had built, and Jacob vowed, and Jacob vowed in everything, in everything, God will bless him. God will bless he will him. Give a tithe. He will give a tithe. A tenth part. A tenth of part of all the blessings. Of all the blessings. I know. I know. You have blessed me. You have blessed me. 
when I cry to you, when I cry to you, and I vow to you, and I vow to you, I pledge to you, I pledge to you, I promise to you, I promise to you that whatever blessings, that whatever blessings you will give me, you will give me, I will give part of it, I will give part of it to honor you, to honor you, to serve in your kingdom, to serve in your kingdom. But when I, uh, I but when immediately but when immediately I received the blessings I received the blessings I got the job I got the job I got the promotion I got the promotion I got the ministry I got the ministry I got peace in my family I got peace in my I family I got restoration I got restoration I forsake I forsook you I forsook you I did I forgot those promises I forgot those promises I forgot those vows I forgot those vows I forgot those pledges I forgot those pledges and as a result and as a result you are grieved in your heart you are grieved in your heart I come to you I come to you in repentance in repentance asking you to forgive me asking you to forgive me I know I know you told me you told me to go to a certain location <laughs> to go to a certain location a certain locality a certain locality a certain town a certain town to do business to do business to do ministry to do ministry but I went in a wrong direction but I went in a wrong direction and as I did that and as, as I did that I have, I have been a victim I have been a victim of judgment of judgment curses curses misfortunes misfortunes sicknesses sicknesses failure failure disease disease infirmity infirmity lack of peace lack of peace commotion of all kinds commotion of all that's kinds that's why this time that's why this time I, I I make a step I make a step to return to you to return to you to ask you to ask you father in the name of Jesus father in the name of Jesus have mercy upon me have mercy upon, have mercy me. upon my family have mercy upon my family where we have uh, forsaken you where we have forsaken in you. many ways in many ways as I have heard your word as I have heard your Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive my family. Forgive my family. Forgive the church. Forgive the church. Forgive the nation. Forgive the nation. Forgive the continent. Forgive the continent. I know you want to touch me. I know you want to touch as me. As I make this step. As I make this step. To repent. To repent. And to return to you. And to return to you. May you forgive me. May you forgive for me. For all the sins. For all the sins. And cleanse me. And cleanse by me. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of In Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This time. This time. I yield to you. I yield to you. I, I confess. I confess that I shall hear your voice. That I shall hear your and voice. And I shall yield it to your will. And I shall yield to your will. Your will is the best. Your will is the what best. Whatever you have spoken to me. Whatever you have spoken as to me. As an individual. As an individual. As a family. As a family. As a tribe. As a tribe. As a nation. As a nation. As a church. As a church. I'm yielding to that. I am yielding to that. It is better. It is better to suffer in your will. To suffer in your will. Doing your will. Doing your will. As Jesus suffered. As Jesus suffered. But you overcame. But you overcame the devil. The devil on the cross of Calvary. On the cross of Calvary. For the joy that was set. For the joy that was set. He overcame. He overcame. Despising the shame. Despising the shame. Because there was joy. Because there was joy after the shame. After the shame. I know. I know. At times, at times, when I yield to your will, when I yield to your will, there is reproach, there is reproach, shame, shame. But it is for a short time. But it is for a short at time. At the end, at the end, there is joy, there is joy, there is victory, there is victory, there is breakthrough, there is breakthrough. Therefore, this time, therefore, this I time, I yield to your voice, I yield to your I voice, I yield to your word, I yield to your word, I yield to your statute, I yield to your statutes, and I promise, and I promise to do your will, to do your will, and I know, and I know, as I have vowed it. Today, as I have vowed today, you will bless me. You will bless in me in the name of Jesus. Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I ask you, Lord. Now I ask you, Lord, to restore me. To restore me because I have confessed my sins. Because I have confessed my sins. Whatever misfortunes. Whatever misfortunes. Whatever sicknesses. Whatever sicknesses. Lord, come and heal me. Lord, come and heal me spiritually. Spiritually. Physically, physically, financially, financially, materially, materially, professionally, professionally, in my ministry, in my ministry. Heal me, Lord. 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 
Deliver me. Deliver me out of any trouble. Out of any trouble. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you arise. May you arise. And let your enemies be scattered. And let your enemies be scattered. That were tormenting my life. That were tormenting my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Even as I return to you. Even as I return to you. I know. I know. You shall protect me. You shall protect me. From these sicknesses. From these sicknesses. Even coronavirus. Even coronavirus. It shall not touch me. It shall not touch me. It shall not touch my life. It shall not touch my life. It shall not touch my child. It shall not touch my church. It shall not touch the nation. It shall not touch the nation. The city. The city. Because we have returned to you. Because we have returned to and you. And we want to walk in your direction. And we want to walk in your direction. And to fulfill. And to fulfill. Every vow. Every vow. Every pledge. Every pledge. Every promise. Every promise. We promised to you. We, we promised you. When we uh, you, you blessed us. When you blessed us. And we know. And we know. As we fulfill that. As we fulfill that. We shall be blessed indeed we shall be blessed indeed so touch our lives so touch our lives revive even the church revive even the church revive even the body of christ revive even the body of christ revive this nation revive this nation and protect this nation and protect this nation and deliver this nation and deliver this from nation this crisis, from this crisis as we have returned to you as we have returned as to you as a nation as a nation even as a continent even as a continent we know we know some believe some believe in chariots in chariots and horses and horses but as individuals, but as individuals, as a church, as a church, as a family, as a family, as the continent of Africa, as the continent of we Africa, believe, we believe in the saving power, in the saving of the power Lord Jesus, of the Lord Jesus, because we have a destiny, because we have a destiny, as individuals, as individuals, as family, as family, as a church, as a church, as a nation, as a nation, as the continent of Africa, as the continent of Africa. This crisis, this crisis, we ask you, we ask you to come, to come with a supernatural, with the supernatural. Divine power, divine power and deliver us and deliver us in the name of Jesus. In the name of and Jesus. And break every oppression. And break every in oppression. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the Christ. name of Jesus Thank Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you, Lord, for the viewers that have heard this message. We are returning to you, to the former place, to the former uh, mission, ministry so that we can accomplish your will as individual as families as a church as a nation as a continent we have repented for every sin for every vow we pledge it to you we vow to you every pledge every promise that we did not fulfill we have repented and now i ask you lord to release healing upon this sister upon this brother upon his family members upon the entire church the entire nation, that this problem, this crisis will be over because as we return to you, you have promised to heal us. You have promised to restore us. And we have made a fresh pledge to serve you. For whatever you shall give us, we shall pay, a, 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 we shall give a, a tenth part of it. We shall honor all our pledges. May the Holy Spirit remind us where we have forgotten every pledge we promised uh, to you on a godly altar because we know the altar is speaking. Yes. May you remind that sister, that brother, where we forsook, for, for, forsook those uh, pledges, we forgot them. Lord, remind so that we can fulfill them. And as we do that, we know this is the time you want to bless us as families, as individuals, as a church, as a nation, and as a continent. Yes. And as we trust in you, we will be delivered, we'll be saved. We shall not find this crisis in our lives. We thank you, Lord, we bless you. Cover us with the blood of Jesus and let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, um, sister, viewer, as we have spoken the word, remember the pledges that you made to God. Remember the ties because the Bible has said, if we do not give the tithes, God will, cannot rebuke the devourer. And many other pledges you promised to God that you shall serve him, that you shall be praying, that you shall go, be going on this altar to serve him in many diverse ways. Remember that pledge in your, when you promised when God blessed you, will bless you in your business, in your career, in your profession, in your ministry, and now fulfill. As you fulfill, that is a, a, a form of obedience. God is going to bless you mightily because 
God is no man's debtor. I encourage you just to fulfill whatever God, you promise to God and God is going to bless you. I want to end with a, a prayer to bless you as we wind up in Numbers chapter 6. You shall be saying Amen. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his son saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you. Amen. And keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Amen. And be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Amen. And give you peace. Amen. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless you mightily. We shall meet in other sessions. Amen.